All right, so welcome again. Thank you for hosting this wonderful show and that we can uh, be part of it. And it's me, Joe Persa, uh, founder of Persa Research. And I've also been doing 3D printing for quite some time, uh, I would say 11 years. And together with me here is Mikolas. Uh, hey, I make uh, content. I'm part of the content team at Prusa Research. Yeah, he does all the wonderful videos. And also we have Matt here. Hey, Matt Stoltz. Uh, yeah, I do community outreach uh, here at Prusa and uh, spend a lot of time chatting with all of you, you folks and uh, helping put together Prusa Live. Yeah. So I, I was saying that I will start a bit, with a little bit of general update what we are up to and how are we doing in this uh, in this 2020 thing. And so far, I would I have to say that we we are pretty good even even at the uh, spring uh, when it started, we didn't have to stop production. We had just like I think two half days because of some some parts. We were prepared pretty well. And we are still continuing to produce uh, at an affected rate. We actually added a little bit more capacity. We were hiring in this in this uh, nonsense of this year. And uh, so we are taming the lead times. But uh, I wanted to I wanted to start with this uh, uh, because, well, yeah, uh, as uh, as Mikolas is showing now, We've been also quite busy in the spring with the whole face, face shield initiative, which uh, took off wonderfully. And I just hope that it helped a lot, a lot of people in the, in the first line. Uh, just ourselves, we printed <clears throat> and later injection molded a quarter of a million of those shields and we gave them away for free to the doctors around Czechia but also uh, all around the globe, so many uh, people joined in. And even some bizarre <laughs> things like, you know, uh, United Lunch Alliance was, was printing our shields. Brett and Whitney was printing our shields. Uh, <laughs> Mercedes-Benz were printing our shields. So uh, I want to thank everyone who joined this initiative. And I think it will be still needed unfortunately for, for this uh, long winter ahead of us. And uh, uh, if I go back to, if I go back to uh, the normal workings of the, of the company, uh, as I said, everything is uh, fine. We are pretty safe, I would say, even though we, the Czechia is right now one of the worst affected countries. But uh, there is only one thing which is uh, almost impossible for us to do, and that is to put new products into the, uh, into the manufacturing because of all the delays and problems uh, uh, caused by this. So there will be probably no launches this year, unfortunately. So I wanted to get this out before uh, we get the chat spammed by, uh, by the question when the Excel is coming. So I'm sorry about that, but it is out of our hands, unfortunately. And I would say that we can go to our program and we have prepared a <laughs> little <laughs> funny video for you with Nicholas. It is a little bit cringy. So I hope you will all appreciate it. Yeah, here we go. We just didn't want to make it boring presentation of what we do. So hopefully <laughs> uh, this will not be boring at all. Yeah, for all of you that welcome you know, to a build plate of the original Prusa i3 Mark III S, our reliable workhorse 3D printer you all know, love, and know. Uh, we have almost 200,000 in the wild, and even though it's out for a while, we are still adding new features with firmware. Just recently, we added a uh, Linear Advance 1.5 in a new firmware release to improve uh, the print quality. And also we are doing such a things like enabling calibration of the first layer with different materials. You know, it's a nice creature comfort. And you can also save different settings for different sheet types. I'm now standing on the textured one. It's very nice. But we also have a pretty smooth one. And new one is coming out soon. And we also add little things like, you know, screen brightness. Hmm. 
<laughs> and this is Ursula Perusha Mini, our latest printer. We launched it exactly a year ago on Earth, and your response just blew us away. Uh, some of you were ordering right at the booth, and we shipped almost 30,000 printers since then, and we are still chasing the lead times a bit. Mini is our first printer with 32-bit body platform, which is the way forward for us, and we are amazed by the power it provides us, so we are adding more and more advanced features. Just recently, we added uh, NTP time server, because you can connect the Mini to the internet with Ethernet port, so the printer can tell you at exactly what time the print will finish, and you can just note it down and come uh, back for it when it's done. But in the, uh, in the near future, uh, you will be able to uh, basically upload G-code through the web interface and start a print. I would call it like Octoprint Lite. Uh, and the Mini is not called Mini because it's small. The build plate is actually quite big with 180 and 180 uh, squared and 180 millimeters uh, tall. But it's Mini because of the price tag, which is just $349. And if the ley lines are just not for you, we have you covered too with the SL1. SL1 is focusing on very high quality components uh, to reduce any artifacting in the print. If you've ever used SLA printing before, you know how messy it can be. And we've got you covered on that too with the CW1, which is our curing and washing machine. So you just simply take the belt plate out of the SL1 and put it in the tank in the uh, CW1, wash it, and then you can also cure the print. And with the latest firmware upgrade for the, for the CW1, you can also preheat the resin before you start printing, for example, if you have everything in your garage in the winter. No matter which printer you buy from us, you are supporting the open source innovation in the 3D printing. And you also support us uh, making other things uh, everyone can use, like Prusa Slicer. That was great, but I mean, everyone's just going to be asking us for the next year, like, when is the shrink rate coming out? Like, you know, the, the, the <laughs> next pro product yeah. and so. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't shrink my quarantine belly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of Prusa Slicer at the end, I think uh, that's another segment that we can talk about. Yeah. I so, think a lot of people will be excited about this because the alpha is yeah. just around the corner. So, Mikolas, I guess you will take over the Prusa Slicer now. Yes. Uh, so, hopefully, you've heard about it. It's our in-house developed uh, slicer. In the past few years, the development kind of skyrocketed since we now have a full uh, full team of developers on it all the time. And the new version 2.3 is around the corner. So I'm going to show you a sneak peek of what you can look forward to. So the, the most, uh, probably the biggest feature, the demanded everywhere on our GitHub and on Facebook groups is well, better supports. So we added paint on supports. So here we will see, oh, I'm not playing. So this is like just default supports generated automatically. And you can see that in some cases, obviously it's uh, gonna be a little bit too much. Here it det detected the uh, threads as overhangs. So it added supports there, even though they are not really necessary. So with the new tool, uh, instead, you just select the surface where you know that supports will be necessary. You paint them. And yeah, this took just a few seconds. And just like that, uh, you have now created supports exactly where you need them. You can also go the opposite way. And that's instead of you know painting the whole model with supports, you can generate them, out them automatically. And then you can select uh, places where you know that they won't be necessary. So here I'm just painting with fret, and that basically blocks them from being generated there. So super, super fast, super easy to make supports now. I think, I don't know how we'll go back to previous versions. <laughs> I just will not be able to, to go back. Another thing that will, this will really improve the quality of top layers. 
Uh, and that now we are looking at the rectilinear infill, which is now the default for top and bottom layers. Mm -hmm. And you can see when I play it now that it goes kind of in both, both directions. So sometimes it goes forward, sometimes it goes back a little bit. The new monotonic infill, which is the new default, uh, it always goes only in one direction. So in this case, kind of right to left. And that has pretty dramatic uh, effect on the sheen, on the on the glossiness of the surface. So you can see that the parts that were printed in the opposite direction have uh, different uh, color a little bit. So this is now gone. And I think this will be just something that uh, from now on in Prusa Slicer, you will just forget that this was ever a problem. It, it will just yeah, always yeah. I, I, would, I would say this is one of the, even though it's quite small feature, I, I would yeah. say it's uh, one of the most impactful ones. Because uh, this this have been bugging me for years and years yeah. and years, and it and is there's... just so simple, and makes so much difference. And there is no downside, even like it's it's not it doesn't take longer. It is just better straight up. Yeah. So yeah, that that's awesome. Another really heavily feature is ironing. So here you can see the top surface was ironed, the bottom one was not. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, just really small extrusion and going many times over the top surface. So it basically fills every, every last little gap uh, with plastic. And that way you end up with much smoother uh, surface. This has a little downside, it, it adds some printing time. So you kind of have to uh, maybe decide when you want to use it. You probably don't want to use it all the time. But it's not that bad. Yeah, it's, it just adds a little bit of time. A uh, thing that we haven't even shown anywhere else is uh, adaptive cubic infill. So it's kind of super mesmerizing to watch. Uh, you can see that the infill is less dense in the middle and it's more dense on the sides and it will also get more dense at the top. So this is just a way to save uh, some printing time and some filament. And there is another version that I'm gonna play without pausing and that uh, this one is just cares about the top layers. So it's super sparse on the bottom and progressively gets denser as it gets to the top. I think it looks awesome. Yeah, this is very, it, it is very useful if you want to print big stuff, uh, but just for showing, if you don't care much about, if you don't care much about the strength, yeah. and you just do something big, it takes a lot of the time off and saves a lot of the material. Another part where we improved Prusa Slicer is uh, seams. So seam is where the layer change happens. And unfortunately, there will always be a little uh, kind of artifact on the surface. So you can now basically force the seam uh, to go where you paint it. So typically somewhere on the back where you don't really mind having a tiny little uh, like deformation on the surface. Uh, and just like with the supports, you can also go the opposite way. So uh, for example, in this case, you could paint the face red and block uh, any seam from being generated in the, in the front of the model. Then we have some quality of life things. So if you know what you're looking for, but you don't know where it is, instead of going through million menus, you can just search for it and it will take you there. And there's even this cute little arrow that's blinking next to the setting. So you really know on the on the setting screen which which value you were looking for, and actually here we can see another feature, and that's that these settings can now optionally uh, be in non-model window. So basically, you have two windows; both are active. You can have settings on one side of the screen, or maybe if you have two screens on the other one, the preview on the main screen, and you will see the changes happening in real time. You know, you you change the infill, and you will see. Uh, it changing in the preview. Spe speaking of preview, uh, there is now a time analysis by feature. So this is super useful if you want to speed up your print and you're not sure what to change, you will immediately see what the bottleneck is. So here, the biggest impact would have to, to lower the infill, but very often that's not the case. It's often perimeters or maybe supports. Uh, so it's really, really handy to, to have this breakdown feature feature by print time. Also, when you click them, you can hide them in the preview. So for example, if you wanted to only see the support contact points or something like that, um, this could be pretty useful. 
SLA printing also got some love in Prusa Slicer. So the three supports are generation is now better. And there's also now improved automatic orientation, uh, which tries to minimize the amount of supports. So that's very nice. Uh, kind of a little bit change under the hood, but uh, really nice from uh, for the user if you have multiple printers is now we have separated the network uh, settings from the profile. So if you have multiple printers, all the same, uh, instead of having duplicates or uh, uh, du just multiple profiles that are exactly the same, except for the I uh, IP address and the API key, uh, you can now just create physical printers and you just fill the name and uh, the network, uh, network things and you link a profile to it. So you have just one profile if you change it it, the changes get propagated to all of the physical printers. Yeah, that will be useful you know, even for us because all our printers from now on will have network connectivity. So it's a nice little change. And last but not least, uh, together with you, the community, you keep sending us profiles for uh, different printers for Prusa Slicer. So there are now more profiles for third party vendors just straight up built in into into Prusa Slicer. Yeah, you can you can submit uh, the settings for other printers and other vendors uh, on our GitHub if you want them baked in. This was just yeah. super quick. There are about a million other improvements. Uh, just follow follow our GitHub or our blog or our YouTube and you can see more there. Yeah, between uh, the the ironing, the monotonic, uh, uh, you know, infill and that seam placement like there's big changes to surface quality coming it's it's going to be really great yeah 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 awesome okay so what do we have next i think uh, i think talking talk about per yeah. yeah oh, oh, oh yeah Prusa Prusa sorry yes yeah let's do prusament okay let's maybe just really run through it really quickly mm. joe you wanna you wanna take that one Oh, uh, uh, I, I can do so. Uh, you have the video, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in, in general, we, we've been doing Prusament for, I don't know, two years. And we grew a lot and everybody just loves it. We now have uh, 12 extrusion lines and one compounding line. And <laughs> we will be getting more to keep everyone and, uh, you know, to make enough for everyone. We are mainly making PLA, PETG, ASAA, and also, as you can see on the screen, a wonderful new uh, polycarbonate blend, which like kind of shifts the uh, view of the uh, printing polycarbonate because you don't have to dry it out. Uh, it's not hygroscopic. And also it is very, very easy to print. Uh, compared to other polycarbonates without, you know, enclosure. So uh, obviously if you are going to print a, a big giant cube over the whole print bed, it will warp, but for, uh, you know, smaller useful things, uh, you mostly can get away without uh, the enclosure. Also, we started a new uh, range of pastel PETG colors which everyone seems to love too, because there is a market full of just bright, vibrant colors. But you know, if you want something to print for your home to the interior, you don't always uh, want it to be that, uh, uh, I would say bright. Uh, and yeah. also uh, we have uh, two mystic colors, uh, which uh, shift the color between the two. You can see that this is between green and purple and they are they look wonderful in person. And also, as you might see uh, on the lion, <laughs> the video is faster than me, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> Should I get... uh, uh, There were some thick layers before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that these, uh, these colors look the best on thick layers. And I've yeah. seen that kind of a trend uh, on Twitter, a lot of people going for thicker layers. I, I, I love it personally. <laughs> yeah. And also we have PLA blends and uh, they create this sheen, uh, you know, silky. And they are also very popular. This is Royal Blue and Miss Pink. 
and they are I think except for like two colors from the I don't know how many tents we have I think they're finally all in stock yeah so yeah. if you want to order them yeah you can. yeah we've been working on getting them in stock also there is there is note that you know, a lot of people are reaching to us uh, about the high prices on Amazon yeah. and mostly it is not us selling it so somebody buys it from the shop and just lists it for ridiculous amounts. So uh, when, when we have uh, some excess, we ship to Amazon ourselves, but you know, that is uh, difficult if we are constantly sold out. So if you, uh, if you want to buy Persimmon, the best way is to buy it uh, from our eShop. Uh, actually, even, even with our prices, it is uh, on Amazon, it is cheaper uh, to buy from us because for two spools, uh, it's just $12 uh, shipping to US. So it is cheaper to buy two spools from us than from Amazon. And, and our shipping is relatively fast too. Like you, yeah. you, uh, it, you would think that coming the whole way from Czech Republic, you'd be you know, waiting for it for weeks on weeks, but you're not. Yeah. You're only waiting a couple of days before it yeah. arrives at your home. Yeah, it's yeah, like two, it three days. It's express shipping. So it's two, three days usually. From the I'm rest. not sure how much time we have left. I guess like three minutes, we have, something. Yeah, like. we have three and a half minutes okay so yeah i can see it now next chain so i guess that's uh time for prusa printers yeah absolutely um so prusa printers is our uh our community uh site that offers a a bunch of different tools to our community members you know of course you know we have these great printers but you need something great to print on them right um and prusa printers is our file sharing site where you can upload your prints and uh you know get the 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 cool things that other people have uploaded to da to download and run on your your printer um we're running contests on it all the time. Uh, we just finished up our, our lighting contest uh, and the, the entries were amazing. Um, oh yeah. We're, we're just blown away by the, the quality of the designs that are being uploaded by our users um, and just really, really love what's, what's going on. Um, so we don't wanna to go too, too deep into what's going on with Prusa printers uh, during this talk because we have another talk at, at uh, one o'clock on the build platform stage um, or the build platform stream um, that we will be kind of taking a deep dive into Prusa printers and uh, community and sharing and things like that. Um, so if you want to know a, a ton more about Prusa printers, um, check in there. But you know this is this is our kind of quick over overview of it. Um, we've just recently passed uh, twenty seven thousand prints on on Prusa printers, which is is great, or twenty seven thousand designs. Um, but you know we want to get keep that number going, and the <laughs> only way for us to do that is with with your help, because this is a this is a community side of things. Yeah, um, yeah. I would, I would say that we also have um, uh, pretty high quality prints, not uh, like, you know, <clears throat> on other sites. Like, yeah, I was just, battery. yeah, I was just <laughs> discussing that actually on Discord that, you know, while we may not have the, the overall arching number as, you know, some of the bigger, more famous sites, um, the quality of what we have is really good. And we really, you know, are, are proud of, of that. Your likelihood of downloading something from Prusa printers and it being a printable model right out the gate is, uh, is much higher than, you know, some, some of the other sites that are out there. Um, I have so one more thing that I love about Prusa printers and that's kind of like with all our things that it keeps being updated all the time. So just like uh, we've just shown in Prusa Slave, sir, there's a team yeah. working on Prusa printers and we follow the, the Twitter, the feed, uh, the Facebook groups, everything where someone says, oh, I wish this was there. When we see the f feature request getting traction, we, we shift the priority. We will actually show some new awesome features in, in the, on the other talk. So it just, uh, this is definitely not finished. We are, we are still working on things. Yeah, All it's right. it's under a huge amount of development and things are, are going really well. And yeah, we've got some exciting features. Yeah, I think we have just 30 seconds left. So yeah. I would say it is time to wrap up. Uh, or do we have some quick questions in the Discord? 
Well, you real, you. real quick in the last 15 seconds, if you want, if you do have questions, ask us in the Discord. But also, uh, if you have questions on, on the regular basis, check us out on Prusa Live um, this coming Wednesday and every other Wednesday. Uh, we have a full hour that you can you can hear from us. Yeah. And, yeah. YouTube, Prusa Research, you will find us easily. Right. Wonderful. Yep. You guys just nailed that perfectly. So you guys can follow along. <clears throat> on their Twitter, their social media, their Facebook, even in our Discord. And as Mickey just said, uh, showed, sorry, their wonderful like competition. Uh, the results should be coming quickly. Gentlemen, I would like to thank you very much for your time and being the first sponsors to, to kick us off. And I'm going to you know, let you guys do all your things you need to because I know it's late over there. It's uh, what, 4.40 uh, in the afternoon in Prague? Yes. Yeah. All right. So, gentlemen, thank you very much. I'm going to bring in our next guests. Uh, yeah. So, uh, welcome. Uh, we are, uh, you know, members of the Prusa team here. Obviously, jo Joseph Prusa with us, uh, the the man that that brought us all together. Um, and yeah, this is kind of your your Prusa Live crew going on here. If you ever watch mm -hmm. our our Wednesday live streams, you know that it's it's just like this. Um, but we want to talk a little bit about uh, Prusa printers right now uh, and really the community side of that and, you know, what all's going on with, with Prusa printers um, because it's, it's really exciting. And I think something that, you know, whether, whether you're a fan of our printers or not, it's something that's accessible to, you know, everyone out there, uh, the entire community. And, you know, we want to make sure that all of you know that Prusa printers aren't just for Prusa printers. Um, but, there are some advantages if you uh, if you are a Prusa printer owner. Um, so uh, yeah, what is Prusa printers? Let me let me pull this up. Um, yeah, I, I would say I would say uh, I would say Prusa printers right now is a uh, uh, very big success, which is not uh, you know it goes a little bit under the radar with all the other stuff we are doing, but it is growing very nicely. So, oh, Matt is screen sharing. Yeah, there we go. Um, so this is Prusa Printers, and yes, like like Joe said, um, you know, it, it is a site that is is growing exponentially all the time. Um, we've just passed over twenty seven thousand uh, individual designs up on Prusa Printers, um, and that grows by about fifty or more designs every single day, and and those those numbers are going up. Um, I think we have a, have around ninety one thousand uh, uh, registered users right now, which is is great. That's a you know huge, wonderful community, um, and we you know obviously encourage all of you guys to come out and join Bruce of Printers. Um, you know, even if you're a fan of other platforms, um, you know we all know that some of those other platforms are having major problems right now. And so, backing your your things up to Prusa Printers is a great way to make sure that your designs, you know, continue staying accessible to everyone. And you know, if a certain site went down, you know, you would you would still have access to that. And we um we do have Thingiverse import tools, so you don't even have to do everything manually. You can just click on it and it will bring all your files over to uh, two Prusa printers. Um, yeah. One of the exciting things I think we've been doing for, you know, quite a few months now uh, is, is running our contests on Prusa printers. And we oh, just yeah. finished up our, our lamps contest, which was um, actually an idea that Joe just like struck out while we were on Prusa live one day. He's like, why don't we do a, a contest about lamps? And yeah. Do you guys want to talk a little bit about what all happened with our lamps contest, especially Nicholas has one of our, I have actually right there two. I have two right here because this is the desk standing threading by Nil Skull. And I also have this nice lamp and it has smart LED bulb in it. So if I dim it, you will actually be able to see oh. it. Oh, and yeah. I saw that one in the office. That is very nice. I actually I... took it home and I put it on the ceiling and I had a, a, a friend come over and he looked at it and he was like, like, this must have cost like a fortune. It looks like a designer, super fancy uh, glass lamp, but it's like a hundred grams of PTG. If I show you from the, I don't know, it's maybe if I turn it on. It's, yeah, I desperately need to get some clear P PTG and, and print this. It's just Bridget's. It's, it's yeah. 
very yeah. little filaments to yeah. to to print it, this. It doesn't have to be like tra transparent uh, filament. No, no, no. Right, it's, right. It'll I've just it, it just looks nice with the light and looks all kind of like a, a crystal, you know, chandelier kind of thing. So Matt, maybe you can if you go to block on Prusa printers, uh, yeah. the latest post will be the winners of this competition. And this lamp, it's I've seen it also printed in Galaxy Black. And that gives like a very nice uh, bisque steakhouse like club vibes. If you put uh, like uh, this Edison IKEA light bulb or something that has really warm warm colors. So. Yeah, we you can you awesome can definitely see. Machine. Yeah, you can see the the kind of makeup of that lamp a lot better um, there. Yes. Um, but yeah, this contest actually had two seg segments to it. One that was kind of a more traditional uh, lamp side of things. And then the second one was, you know, what can you do with cool LED lighting? Um, and uh, Ray Jizza, who is uh, a constant uploader to the site and, you know, oh, contributor to the, the, uh, uh, the contest, uh, he ended up taking it with his, his cute skull lamp here. Um, and we just, we just love his design. So much fun. Yeah. And that is the desk trending. Miklos, did you did you actually manage to to motorize it? I know you were working on it. Um I have the prototype working with the one arm. I'm waiting for more servos. Uh so now it's the tedious uh refreshing the, the shipping if, if the servos will come. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm really, really uh hoping I can make something out of it for when we can go back. Uh, to events in, in person actually to, to show, show this. Yeah. yeah. But of course, you know, the, the site has plenty more things other than just lamps, obviously. We have yeah. we have lots of different categories for models, uh, you know, so you can you can really find what you're looking for. Um, the search works great when you're you're searching for things. You can search on on the models themselves. You can search on you know individual designers, um, and we have plenty of the the designers out there that you guys all know and love. I know Luby was was on uh, a little bit earlier, and she definitely has designs out here. Um, yeah, so uh, continuing to grow, continuing to build. Um, you can you can do a lot of filtering on the the site as well. I think really, what's really, really kind of usage. setting us apart at the moment is maybe it's like sort of advantage in the fact that we started a little bit later that may maybe we don't have like that many you know, million prints. We have 27,000 prints, but they are like very high quality, like the, the, the ratio of like, you know, random yeah. L brackets that no one will ever use to actual high quality models is, I think, they're pretty amazingly high on Prusa printers. Yeah, for, for as much as I love Customizer on Thingiverse, one of the, the issues there is like, as soon as Customizer came out, people started just putting their name on key, key chains and hitting Customize and then uploading that to Thingiverse. So, you know, Thingiverse has has about, you know, sure it has, you know, over a million things, but it also has, you know, 500,000 keychains on it too, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I here's an idea how to raise the number of the prints. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, in, I, I, yeah. In yeah I, had, I would love to example, see us have some kind of customizer, but yes, I love having having a higher quality print level. Yeah, we had, for <laughs> example, a competition about uh, reusing the Prusiamen spools, and it also had like an incredible amount of. Actually, we can see one right now, the Prusiamen. And these are like all really like high quality, you know, they have manuals, the, the prints, it's not just random STLs and like, there you go, do whatever you want with it. People actually write very like detailed instructions on how to assemble the prints. It's, yeah, we it's have wonderful cool. people entering stuff into, into our contests. Yeah. I would have never, never imagined that uh, such uh, detailed things will be put in the contest. Yeah, it's it's been really inspiring with each and every contest that comes comes about, like how how many high quality you know things that that we get out of it. I think there were like three hundred entries in the lamp contest or something like that. It was yeah. it was crazy. So, yeah. and that that wasn't even the biggest uh, turn turnaround right. we had. Yeah, right. Yeah, because that one was kind of tricky, right? Like designing a lamp yeah. and like designing a good looking looking lamp was was actually a hard contest. Um, and so it's impressive that that we got that many entries just on on that one. Um, uh, and you know, and these contests, 
there's a good reason why people are, are putting forth the effort and things we're, we're giving away printers with, with our contest. So, um, you know, definitely check it out. You know, there's a definitely a chance to, to win a printer there. Um, uh, but also, like I said, you know, just uploading your, your normal everyday models. Um, it's also a place where, where we put all the things for, for that we designed. So, uh, the face shields that we designed, um, are, are up here too, and have been, you know, highly downloaded. Uh, we can see that the, the U S version of the space of the face shield has, you know, over 20,000, uh, downloads on it, which is, you know, very impressive in and of itself. Lots mm -hmm. of people out there. I, can face I think I think all the all, all our variants have like two hundred thousand downloads. Nicolas. Yeah, the, yeah. The face. Yeah, yeah. That's just that's just crazy. But I think it's kind of it's overlooking some of the features to to see Prusa printers only as a as a another model sharing website because yeah yeah we as you we've can definitely... see in the tab yeah there are there are yeah. more functions that Matt is showing. Yeah, we, we've definitely pushed uh, a, a lot more features. Um, you know, one of the, the key things that we're kind of, you know, building upon here is um, our, our world map. And so this map will, uh, will tell you where there are Prusa printers. As I continue scrolling oh. out here, where there are Prusa printers throughout the, the entire world. The video is a bit uh, slideshow on the stream, but I guess that's, that's what, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. I guess, I guess you need a Starlink connection. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Prusa printers all, all over the world. Um, and, you know, we're adding some new features to this. One of the things I think is is really exciting is our, our print on demand feature that, that we recently added, again, kind of during COVID. We thought, you know, people are at home. They may not, you know, they, they may not be working right now with everything that's going on. Um, let's find a way that they can potentially make some money on, by using their, their Prusa printer, by using their printers. Um, and so we created this this print on demand function where you can you can list your printer as being accessible for print on demand, and then if someone sees a print that they really want on Prusa printers, but you know they don't have a printer themselves, uh, they can look for people who are in their local area who have print on demand turned on and send out a request to say, hey, can you print this for me? Um, we aren't handling any of the the financial transactions on that or anything. That's entirely you know up to you guys to to figure out. Um, but that also means we're not taking a cut of it too. So you know, it's, uh, it's completely up to the user how much they want to charge and, you know, how much they, they want to make off the, the kind of final, final thing. Yeah. Um, we're not, we're not injecting into that. Oh, that's actually awesome. Great, great bird 3 d is saying in the chat that some, someone local found him on Prusa printers and he was able to manage to, to, to help someone printing again, to fix the, fix the machine. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, because that's one of the other functions that we have is we have, uh, uh, you know, tech support that, that's in there. So while we have yeah. amazing techs, um, you know, who who you can get in touch with uh, via chat or, you know, email, all kinds of things, um, you know, sometimes it's just easier to see if there's there's someone in your, your local area, you know, go over to your local makerspace, um, you know, talk to people at 3D printing meetup groups and things like that and see if somebody can help you out with your printer. So, uh, yeah, if you if you turn on tech support, you're saying, hey. I'm someone who will help you with your, your printer. Um, and, you know, makes it a lot easier for, for people to go and, and, and find someone nearby that will help them. You know, not necessarily the, the biggest used feature right now during COVID times as we're all kind of keeping our social distance from each other. Um, but something that, you know, definitely can, can be used in the, in the future. Um, it works really great in conjunction uh, with our groups feature too. Um, so. Matt, I will jump in yeah, just, go ahead, uh, just, for, uh, just for a tiny bit if i'm not mistaken we are uh adding a new thing <clears throat> to help people uh price the prints and yeah. that is in final stages of testing so if you yes. if you if you are open to print on demand it will be much easier for you to know how much uh it's okay to ask for the print yeah, I I, uh, I I wasn't sure if we were talking about the pricing tool yet, but yeah, that's uh, that's going to be super super useful to help make sure that like you know you kind of run through a, a list and and figure out the the price for an actual print and uh, make sure you're not kind of forgetting the little things in there and and kind of finding yourself in trouble for how much you quoted later on. 
let's see. We can go back to that if I can if I can manage to log into the Oh, I'm actually there. Matt, if you Yeah, if I'm you... gonna stop the share and you can take over. Yeah. I'll take over. Oh uh, yeah, so we made a calculator. Uh, what we describe here is probably what I'm going to kind of say right now is that there are already some three different calculators online right now, but I feel like they are either one or the other. Either they are too simple and they are just straight up, uh, you know, it's just filament uh, used times uh, spool price. So it's just Flyter can tell you that. Or they are super complicated, but they are like missing any default values and uh, you have to fill so many so many fields and you're really not sure what to fill them with. So we made a new calculator where you can actually upload G code or you know just fill the the printing time and uh, the weight manually. But there is there are default values uh, in as many places as possible. And if you choose ASA, it will change everything. You can set a markup, everything updates in real time. And yeah, for example, electricity very often asked, is it important? Not really, so it's off by default, but you can turn it on. And there is some default price for, for kilowatt hour. And yeah, very important things like print preparation, you should probably price that somehow. Uh, if you're if you're running this as a business, you might want to, uh, you know, the printer should probably pay for itself. Is if its only purpose is to is to make you money, and yeah, stuff like that. You can you can share it in the end if you if you fill the name. Uh, you can share it, and this will actually create a, a permalink. And yeah, if, if you send it to someone, uh, he will see the the filled calculator. It's pretty nice. Uh, we are still kind of finishing finishing touches on it, or translating translating it to other languages. But yeah, this is how it will look like. Yeah, it's a, a great added feature to to help out people, especially when they're they're looking to turn their three D printer into something more than just just a hobby, but also you know a potential business that that helps either pay for the hobby or you know helps pay for their their general lifestyle. Someone was also asking about the Thingiverse import and if we can make a tutorial on it. And I can do it right now in like 20 seconds. If you're logged in, you, cre you click Create, uh, and there is the option Thingiverse import. If you're doing this for the first time, it will ask you to put a link in your Thingiverse profile so that we can verify that you're actually importing your models and not someone else's. <laughs> and once you do that, uh, it will just show all your Thingiverse models here and you select the ones you want to import. And I think this will create drafts. Uh, and I think the only thing you have to select is category or something like that. And then you can just hit publish and you have, you now have a model on, on push printers. Uh, it's very really easy. Yeah. I, I, uh, from the data, I see already 2,200 uh, 2, people imported from Thingiverse. Yeah. Yeah, which is great. Uh, you know. Uh, Little caveat there, every once in a while people come back to us and say, hey, you know, the Thingiverse importer is broken. Like, why doesn't, why does the import break? Um, it, to be honest, it's never broken on our side. <laughs> it, it breaks from time to time because Thingiverse breaks from time to time. And so, you know, if you're having problems importing, um, like, like everything else on Thingiverse, maybe wait a day or two and try again. Um, because sometimes, sometimes Thingiverse just doesn't work right now. So. Nicholas, uh, Nicholas, which uh, which other uh, model share, sharing uh, site? Or we don't have to name them, but I think we found out that one of the sites who did uh, Thingiverse import, uh, it was done manually by people in the office. Yes, uh, it, it's it, it, the import is only working during business hours, which I know right. it sounds, sounds funny, <laughs> but you have to yeah. give it to them. At least they are they are giving in the work, which is really impressive too. Yeah, yeah, they're at least trying. So I feel I feel bad for all those people hand importing all, all of those in, but they are they are definitely trying. Um, yeah. So let's see. I will share again. So yeah. So I started discussing. Uh, we have groups, um, and this kind of ties in again with with 
the the map and finding people who who are local near you um groups was something that that we kind of had in works beforehand to to work on on some other things but we thought would be a great addition during covid for people who were kind of collaborating together to try to work on on face shield production um so groups is is you know a simple way that people can can find uh local people in their area um to uh to work together and and work on a, a single task. Um, of course, you know, we'll see how people use it in the future. Um, it'll be very interesting to see how, how it grows and how it expands. And, you know, if if it stays as kind of local groups or if it kind of it expands out to be, you know, people working collaborati collaboratively on projects across the internet, um, as well as, uh, you know, what kind of projects are they necessarily working on? Um, so yeah, so here we see uh, the Canada 3D printing group. This one seems to be based out of Quebec, Canada, um, has 146 members in it and members are able to, you know, message each other and leave comments uh, within the group. Um, they can look for, for nearby groups in, in, you know, a geographic area, um, uh, see who all's, who all's members. Um, it really is a, a great little tool that a lot of people have used, you know, very well during these times to like hurry up and make face shield productions and, and things like that to, to work together. Um, I, I know I, some of my friends down in Rhode Island have, have been using it uh, a lot for the efforts that they, they put forward to, to outfit shields there. Yeah. And also it has great, great uh, use for, you know, other 3d printing enthusiasts. So uh, after yeah. the, the whole COVID thing ends, because I think 3D printing is, you know, you are creating things in physical world. So, you know, uh, nothing beats to uh, showing it off in person. And, oh, you, you know, uh, I think everybody is, is getting bored of, uh, of the Facebook and uh, looking forward to meet up in real life. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, there, there's already expanding groups of, of local meetups that are going on out there that, you know, people are getting together. And, and pre-COVID, we were helping kind of, you know, bring some of those together. Um, but yeah, people getting together and sharing their tips and their techniques and showing off their prints, you know, while, while enjoying a, a glass of beer, you know, something like that. Um, and, you know, groups was kind of a, a little bit of an extension of that. And, you know, we're hoping that as people you know, in the future, as things get fixed, and people are able to kind of go back to being together in public, that groups is one of the things that they'll be able to use to kind of organize, you know, monthly, you know, meetup groups in, in different areas around the world. Um, and we will definitely be, be helping out there. Um, but yeah, I look forward to seeing things, you know, other than like, you know, face shields and, and COVID kind of things, but, you know, people working in, in, in the groups for collaboratively for things like, you know, I know that, that earth had the, the 3d printed, um, uh, like Pinewood Derby kind of things last year, you know, it'd be interesting to see groups like that created where people are, you know, sharing their, their tips and their techniques for how to get the, the fastest 3d printed car. Or, you know, I, I used to run, uh, a 3d printing competition called mobo paddle battle for 3d printed paddle boats um oh, yeah. and yeah it'd be great to have a mobo paddle battle group of people talking about <laughs> you know how to how to build paddle boats uh with their 3d printers and you know as as we see how more people are using the tool uh we'll expand what the tool is capable of doing because you know we are kind of constantly updating prusa printers and adding new features uh to make sure that it you know definitely fits what the community needs. Um, in fact, I think- uh, Yeah, I think speaking right of here. new features. Yeah, yeah. We can, so we, can we have something. a very exciting new feature that we would like to preview for you guys right now that, that you know, never before seen. So this is uh, uh, Prusa maybe, Printers 3. I don't know if, uh, I, maybe I can screen share it. Uh, it's seems yeah, why, why don't you do it? Yeah, why don't you do it, Nicholas? Because I have it on local machine. Right. Uh, 
yeah, so this is this is something I have been dying for, and I'm so excited that it's here. But yes, we have 3D uh, 3D previews, so both thumbnails and an interactive 3D preview on all of our files. And so this doesn't just uh, this doesn't just work on STL files, but it's STL, OBJ, 3MF, uh, and we're even getting very close to having G code working. So you'll be able to get you know full 3D preview of what the G code will actually look like at the end. So you know for all of those people that are concerned about, oh, you know, uh, someone could, could put up G code that isn't what you think it is. Well, 3D preview will, will be able to ensure that you're not printing uh, mm -hmm. uh, things that you don't want to be printing when someone, when someone says it is something. So yeah. That's, that I think is, you all know I, what I mean. I haven't, I haven't seen a single issue of, of, of that right. so far. So that, that's luckily going very good. Yeah, I really like that uh, it's, even in the in the 3D preview, there's a download button. So, you know, if you're looking just for one file from the from the set, you can immediately download it. You don't have to. Oh, what what was this file name? I I need to search for it in the list again. Right. That is wonderful. Yeah, and you you can just stay focused on the. If you're if you want to look through the 3D files, you don't have to go back and forth. You can just focus on them and stay in the 3D view. Uh, one thing that's um, I don't know maybe a little bit strange is, uh, for example, this box is very likely a modifier in Prusa Slicer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it just imports it as a geometry. But yeah, I mean, it, it, is, it is what it is. You, you at least know that there are modifiers. And that will often be the case with 3MF files, with STL files. There will obviously not be any, any yeah. modifiers. Hmm. This is not live yet. Um, this is a recording from our test server. Um, finishing touches. Uh, I, I don't know the ETA, uh, but I would say week to something like that, probably. Yeah, definitely coming soon. Um, and there's there's lots of other features coming soon to to Prusa printers. Um, uh, email notifications, woohoo! Uh, email no notifications are are on the way, um, and so that will also you know cross across to groups and things like that. Um, combined avatars that will move across, you know, all the different kind of uh, areas between uh, Prusa printers and uh, the forum and uh, groups and everything else uh, that will will be be soon. Um, and lots of other other great features. Uh, but yeah, so we have like five, seven minutes left, something like that. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be great to, to take a couple questions instead of great. Just us talking. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you have any suggestions for Russia Printers features, please just send us to us anyway, tweet it, uh, post it on Facebook. Uh, yeah. Tag, tag yeah, shit sure. on Prusa Live, whatever way you can get it to us, we read yeah. it. Yeah, for I sure. I get, I get stuff from people all the time over, over Twitter. So, you know, feel free to reach out to me if you have ideas, I'm, I'm here to listen. Yeah. Uh, I, I need to give, give a shout out to, to Neil Skull. Uh, yeah. Like an hour ago, he posted. Yeah, wonderful. Wonderful badge area, which we knew that we want to do badges, but I guess uh, he, he made the work for us. So we this will is just like, yeah. <laughs> This is very high effort pitch. You don't have to make it so fancy. You know, if you just say, uh, I want this in chat, oh, it's really important to us, you know, kind of to know the... The, the demand kind of sets the the priority in the, in the task list for us because if if all of you want something then we obviously should make it faster than than some nice feature that might not be so critical yeah that's yeah that is really great that looks really really great and yeah uh it will it will definitely be soon because all of us are dying for badges it's <laughs> it, it's something that comes up pretty regularly so uh yeah that that looks great all right. Do we have any questions out there on update on Excel and print farm? Yeah, we kind of went over that in the main segment. Uh, difficult to really develop and get anything into manufacturing at the moment. So, yeah, unfortunately, no, not really any updates. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry about that, but we cannot do much. So I'm trying to find some questions in the Discord. Do we see something? Yeah, there's Zomis. Yeah. Maybe we see the same thing on Discord by Zumi or I will say there was a question I caught in the YouTube chat 
by somebody who asked, what things are you guys excited for, either Prusa or just 3D printed in general, 3D printing related in general? Uh, well... <laughs> working that, that, is a, that is such a hard that is such a hard question for us because obviously we know some of the super exciting things that we do have coming um and we can't talk about those things but some of those things i'm straight up calling are like game changers and so which you know gets it, it's an overused term right but like you know that's one of the reasons why we have the reputation that we do is you know joe and and michael and our entire dev team really just keep pushing things further and further but um you know unfortunately we don't want to tease too much because you know you you guys you guys are a little little upset with us about the t's on the excel and then the excel's you know taking some time but you know that was out of our hands as so many things have um but yeah things are things are coming but uh, I would say I would say the the coolest, you know, visually, and you know, from the point of view of uh, something, you will be at Dubai Expo, well, twenty twenty, which will be in twenty twenty one, maybe. <laughs> but we will have the part of Czech uh, exposition there. That'll be wonderful. That will be epic. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm excited about a lot of the things that are rolling out to Prusa printers. It's something I'm, you know, super, super passionate about. Um, and yeah, some of these, these new features that are on the way and, you know, continuing to, to get more of you guys on, on board the platform, um, so that we get more and more, more cool items out there. <laughs> so it, it seems like we answered all the questions in the discord. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the typical Prusa slides or 2.3, when is it coming out? We do not have a, a oh, the next question. We don't have a set date. It's kind of when yeah. it's stable enough and when all the, the critical yeah. bugs are fixed. Yeah, and also the new Windows update we just rolled out uh, broke a few things and made it's, it super it's... slow. So yeah. Wojciech, Wojciech almost like uh, th thrown uh, the PC out of a window, how mad yeah. he was. But... It wasn't even like a Windows update, it was Windows build server update. And just oh. suddenly the, the window is super sluggish and we have to change the whole thing, how, how uh, like system UI controls are rendered and how many can be loaded at a time and it's such a pain yeah yeah so Wojciech, <laughs> Wojciech is not working on on linux <clears throat> but yeah they are, they are fixing it and i think it's already in testing for the alpha release so yeah so i i actually think that's our time i see 129 here so we are we are wrapping up what was that no I also oh, I thought I heard voices. I also heard a ghost or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, that that's our time. We really appreciate you guys. You know, flipping over from the main channel to to catch this discussion with us. Um, you know, we we know that there's there's a lot going on today, and yeah, and we appreciate it. If you want to see more of us and hear more of us, uh, this Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern uh, is Prusa Live number 11. Uh, we we've been doing Prusa Live for a while now, basically. Just like you see here, but an hour of us and, you know, talking about more of what's going on and sharing some of the contests that. and things like that. Who wouldn't want uh, to hear us rambling for uh, an yeah. hour? For, for a full hour, exactly. Sebastian in the chat noticed that there is also a separate G-code previewer in Prusa Slicer 2.3. Yes, there is. And it's also oh, a standalone yeah. application, so you can associate G-code files with it. And when you double click it, it will just quickly open the preview. It's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, All right. guys. Uh, so we Thank hope you. to see you guys Wednesday uh, on Prusa Live. And until then, uh, so long from the Prusa team. Enjoy the weekend. Bye. Awesome, Thanks for having guys. Us. Thank you guys for, for being here. Thank you guys for taking a couple minutes extra and coming on early when I asked. Greatly appreciated. I know that everybody loves uh, seeing you guys. I will tell you that the uh, the numbers jumped a little bit. You